Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome back. It's been a while since I recorded. I have been, well, very sick. I don't think it was COVID-19, but I just don't feel fully recovered yet. I don't know. This one's different. This is like cold flu things just not going away. I can't quite figure it out. Anyways, so forgive any coughing, sneezing, ramblings. I think I'm rambling right now. But anyways, Point being, in this video, what we're gonna cover is introduction to QML. Now, before you get super excited, this video is gonna show you how to enable the designer and some of the features of the designer. There's a reason for that. Out on udemy.com, I am re-recording all my old courses. You can see I have like a QML for beginners with Qt5. Well, obviously we're now navigating towards Qt6. You can see I've got the core already upgraded to six. But I've got a QML and a widgets and a design pattern. I really want to get those upgraded to Qt6. So we're going to be navigating through the designer and figuring this out. This is going to be essential, not just for the Udemy courses, but also this YouTube series. QML is, well, constantly changing. And sometimes Qt as a company will throw you a curveball. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's dive in and take a look. Okay, the very first thing we need to do is enable the designer. Now, what am I talking about, enable the designer? We're gonna go here and your operating system is gonna be different. Obviously, I'm on Linux, but I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to open up Qt Creator. This part right here should look similar on just about every operating system. Mac users note you'll have that little Mac icon up in the corner that you're used to. That's where you'll need to go for this. But you notice this little design is grayed out. Let's demonstrate what I'm talking about here. If I say new, and we're gonna to go to a cute quick application. Next, and we're just gonna leave whatever random name it puts in there. Next, make sure it's CMake. Next, whatever kit we got. Next, and just next, next, next. All right, this is really cool. But yeah, all we can do is code. There's no designer, like in widgets, how you could drag and drop controls. Well. That just won't do. That's not cool. So how do you fix this? Well, it's simple. You go to help and you go to about plugins. Now remember Mac users are gonna have that little Mac icon up in the corner that you used to. You'll have to go over there, but you're gonna go to about plugins. And these are all the things that load up when Qt Creator loads. And this is why it may take a while on older systems. And you're gonna either search or scroll down for QML designer and you see this little red line here that means it's not loading so we're going to check that and it says restart required so we're going to close we're going to go ahead and restart now and once it restarts voila the design button is magically enabled now why did Qt do that I I don't know um, I have my thoughts and reasonings but I I don't know for sure so when you click this, you can see, well, it takes a second on slower machines. I'm on a virtual machine and it can get kind of like jumbled up here. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to walk through the various parts of the designer. Okay, now that we have the designer enabled, let's go ahead and walk through the various parts here. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new application. You can actually just open up an existing one if you want, but I'm gonna make a new one, cute quick application, whatever name it gives me. And we're just gonna say CMake, our required version, next, 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 next. And this is usually the first question I get is, hey, I have a project open. I selected my file, but the designer's still not opening. I don't understand. Well, the file's not open. This is one of the caveats here. So you got to double click it, make sure it's open. Then you can go into the designer. This is typically what you're going to see right off the bat here. You'll notice there are various components, but it's minimal. Like there's no buttons or anything like that. So you're going to get kind of confused and we're going to walk through this. But at a high level, there's things like the library. These are your actual components. You're only gonna get the default components at startup. You can add in assets, and then you have things like your project, file system, open documents, your navigator. You can tell what's selected, because it's highlighted in blue. We're gonna to touch on that quite a bit in this video. The form editor and the text editor. Now the form editor and the text editor, these two actually work hand in hand. 
So for example, this white area is our form, but it's actually bigger than our display. So I'm gonna just go 400 by 400. And as I'm typing, you can see what I've changed because it highlights it in red here, that's not saved. And in real time, it's automatically changed it, even though it's not saved. Pretty cool, huh? Then you have your properties, and this is the properties of whatever is highlighted, which again is in blue down in our navigator. Now I wanna really touch on that. Right now, this is not abundantly helpful. For example, if I look for a button, all other components, you notice that's in red. Not abundantly helpful here. Really, whenever it's in red, it means it matched the pattern we typed, but it's in all other components. I want specific components. So we're gonna go here, and we're gonna go to components and hit that little plus sign. Select a module to add. And this can get a little overwhelming, but usually what you're gonna want is like cute quick controls. And it will add it in there for us. And then we get what we really expect, things like dials and buttons and all sorts of fun stuff. Now remember, QML runs anywhere. So it's gonna be different than widgets. So you're not gonna find things like tree views. They exist out there on the internet, but you'll have to really hunt for them because this could be running on a mobile device and a tree view doesn't make a whole lot of sense on say a small screen cell phone or something. So let's just plop some controls on here. I'm gonna take a button and we can either drag and drop it right onto the form or we can take a button and drag and drop it right into the navigator. Now you may be wondering, where is it? So here's the top button. Where's our other button? Where is it? It's just gone. This is what I mean by it can get a little confusing. It's actually there, but you don't see it because it doesn't have an XY position. Oh, that can get super frustrating. So we're gonna get rid of this button and we can either delete it in the code like this and you notice it disappears from the navigator. I'm gonna control Z that. Or we can highlight it in the navigator, right click and go to edit and delete. So which is the appropriate way? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. You notice how when I drag and dropped it right onto the form editor, it gave it the XY position. This goes into positioning your components. And in QML, typically you use what's called a layout and an alignment. You can see it over here. When you look at, whoops, my mouse got a little crazy on me there. When you look at your highlighted component and you're in the properties, you can see there are things like the type, the ID, which is unique to every widget, the name, state, and so on. Now, if you're wondering what state is, you'll see it down here. Think of it like a stoplight, red, yellow, or green. That determines the state of the component. But then you can switch, and I, I actually don't like this. You can switch between the properties of the component, for example, this is a button, or the positioning or the layout. And this can get really complex. You have tons and tons of options but this is what I'm talking about here. So you can say button, change some things, or layout, and we wanna move this to the center. So I'm gonna say bang, bang. So we are aligning that vertically center and aligning it horizontally center. That gets really cool, but back to the problem at hand. This guy right here, where is he? Button one's just gone. Notice if we select him in the navigator, we got the ID. We can see because we're switching between button and button one. So let's go back to our button and let's break this little guy here and go to button one, which is off the screen somewhere. Simply sending it to the center will actually snap it onto the form and give it a position. But when you look, instead of an XY, it has an anchor. We are anchoring this vertically center and horizontally center. This is something we'll really drill in when we start talking about QML code in depth, but I really wanted to put that out there. Now, I'm not a fan of positioning like this. Typically what I'll do is I'll put something inside of a row or a column. So I'm gonna say column, and we're just gonna drag and drop that right onto our window. And you notice how all of these are children of the window. We wanna put the buttons inside the column. There's a couple different ways we can do that. We could go into the text editor and cut and paste. Or we could try to do this form designer, which is you know, just a lesson in futility trying to get it in there. But what really works is if you just grab it down in the navigator, click and drag and highlight the column and drop it in. 
You'll notice one thing that happens right off the bat though is it gets really confused about what it's supposed to be doing, but it snaps it to its parent. Remember button one, we have aligned horizontally, or I should say vertically and horizontally in its parent, which is now this column. What I'm really trying to drive home here is in the designer, there are multiple ways to do the same thing, and it will just be maddening trying to figure them all out. And sometimes the designer will do things and you're like, wait, what just happened? When in doubt, undo, redo is your friend. So for example, if I grab this and I try to do something with it that I really shouldn't, like that, it now takes up the whole thing. Control Z. And you can undo and redo a little too far. Like you see, I have actually snapped it a little too far out and button one is no longer a child. But you can go you know, up here, undo, redo. So we're going to redo it and put it right back in the way we wanted it. This is pretty awesome. Now, some other things I wanted to touch on. For example, buttons are not really useful unless you can click on them. So how do we make it clickable? Well, we can either go into the designer and the text editor here, and we could say something like on click. Now everything's gonna start with the word on, and then you get all of the slots for that component. Or what you can do, instead of typing it out, is you can simply highlight it, and down here in the connections, hit the plus button on click and then you can actually edit this right in place really really cool and it puts the code in there for you button on click console log click you can open the connection editor you can connect signal to an event you can do all sorts of really cool things you can even do property bindings so for example if we change the text of a button it also changes the text of the other button why you'd want to do that i don't know but and you can set custom properties and data backends and things of that nature it's actually really, really cool the way this works. So this was a very high level overview of the designer. I would recommend you go in with a couple junk projects, just play around with them, see how it works, see what works for you, get it the way you want it. But one special note, you see green and red. Whenever you see red, that means it's not saved. So I'm gonna hit Control S on the keyboard to save it and watch that red go away. Always make sure you've saved your projects. And if you have an oopsie, for example, if you click off and you go, oh no, wh where's my text editor? I, I closed it. Oh no, where's my form editor? I've closed it. Well, 99% of the time you can go into view, views, and here you go, form and text. So we're just going to check those. So if you accidentally close something, don't panic. There's a very easy way to bring it right back. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.